if you have seen my social media video prior to this webinar, you would know that this is something I'm really looking forward to. I'm really looking forward to the conversation that we're about to have. I'm, I'm incredibly excited by the fact that I get to have this level of conversation with two absolute experts in the area. We have um, a senior individual from Microsoft who is going to be talking uh, about more of the technical aspects of this, of this really cool, phenomenal technology that's set to change the path of small businesses forever. And he's going to be unlocking that for us. He's going to be confronting real qu uh, questions, real issues that we as small businesses face. So I'm really excited about that. And we also happen to have Vikas from our host organization, Axis. And he's going to um, unlock some of the uh, more practical questions related to how we transact in South Africa. How do we make this work in South Africa? Uh, where do we get the technology from? And so on. So I'm accompanied by two very um, informed, knowledgeable guests. And I think we are all, as a small business community on this call, we're all going to derive a tremendous amount of benefit. And to that end, I'm incredibly excited to begin with the welcomes. Let's start with a brief introduction. Uh, by both our panelists. Um, Ayman, we're going to kick off with you. If you wouldn't mind introducing yourself to our audience, we have a big turnout, so everyone's very excited to hear from you today. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks so much. I'm, uh, I'm really excited to be here to talk about Copilot. My name is Ayman Afana. I'm the Partner Technical Strategist with Microsoft, working with our uh, channel and sales uh, distributors as well to create their technical strategy uh, to, 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 you know, on the transformation side as well. And more particularly, how can we, you know, in the age of AI, how can we leverage more AI with the, with, you know, with, with our partners and customers? Excellent. Welcome, Ayman. I personally am looking forward to the opportunity of asking you some not tough questions with the idea of being tough, but tough from the perspective of, you know, we're, we're a small business community on this call. That's what this call is about. It's about helping the small business community in a very tangible way. And we really want you to guide, guide us and steer us in that direction. We want to keep the conversation pragmatic. We're not technologists. We really just want to know how do we use this technology to be effective in our business, all right? So I look forward to un unearthing that with you. Vikas, if you could please give us an introduction. We'd love to know who you are and what you're about. Thanks, Karishan. Good afternoon, everybody. Excited to be here. Um, I head up digital services at Access. It's our number one goal to participate in our partners' digital transformation journey. And excited to, to, to meet all of you today and discuss where we can be of assist, assistance to you guys. Fantastic. Looking forward to the discussion with you, Vikas. Um, so for all of you who are on the call right now, welcome. Let's get into a vibrant, robust discussion. I personally am incredibly excited about, about today's chat. Um, I want to spell out that today's webinar is brought to us by Axis. Axis is really the front runner right now in South Africa in terms of activities to do with AI and small business. In fact, Axis has launched recently a small business resource, resource hub. So this is an AI for small business resource hub, and it's set up to give small business owners, IT personnel inside small businesses, effective tools, systems, methods, help, guides, resources in general, just to ensure that small businesses are extracting as much value from the AI opportunity as they possibly can. So we are very grateful to Access for leading the charge when it comes to small business and, to, and for really uh, you know, paving the way for small businesses to catch up to and possibly even exceed the work being done by the larger corporates when it comes to the subject of AI. So we're very grateful to Access on that. So without further ado, let's get right into the questions. Now, um, we're going we're gonna to kick off um, with Vikas on this one. All right, this is going to be our opening question, Vikas. Um, let's start with a high level discussion on how does Microsoft Copilot enhance product productivity and collaboration? Um, you know, obviously we're looking at the Microsoft 365 stack. Um, so within M365, how does Microsoft Copilot help us with productivity and collaboration for small businesses in particular? I think the first step to understanding that would be to go back a, a couple of other steps for and look at cloud computing in general, where, where Microsoft has led the charge in democratizing, you know, expensive enterprise grade infrastructure that the big corporates used to invest in. 
um, by making products like Office 365 available at a price point that's very attractive to any size business. The real value is then in um, unleashing this level playing field where small businesses and enterprise businesses can compete. Um, and now just the next evolution of that step is where Copilot comes in, where you can apply natural language as an example to communicate with computers and get answers um, to your questions much faster in the modern day workplace. Um, and I think that is probably the, one of the biggest adoption curves that we're going to see, um, you know, going from the olden days where you had command line um, interfaces to user interfaces to now where we have this modern language that we can use where any person can communicate with a computer and get those answers quickly. Phenomenal. Um, so for everyone on the call, I mean, I'm, I'm, I assume everyone here has a varied background. So we have, um, you know, various perspectives as the discussion is going on. If there's something that you run across that doesn't make sense, that doesn't add up, please feel free to drop it into the chat. Um, I'm monitoring the chat very actively. You, you can also use the Q&A box if you want. The chat is fine or the Q&A box. I'll be monitoring both. I think at this stage, I want to just make one comment on what Vika said. We spoke about natural language interfaces. Um, it's very important to realize that uh, moving forward as we interact um, with, with technology, we, we're starting to do it in a more human way. So the manner in which we are, we are basically making requests of the computer is now a lot more human. So in other words, we're using our voice. Um, in some instances, we might be using gestures. We might be using um, you know, handwritten text. So uh, basically, when Vikas makes that point, it's, it's, it's really all coming down to the simplicity of we don't have to be very computer literate in order to do very sophisticated things with our computers nowadays. We can actually speak a command. You could have an entire workforce that doesn't have computer skills that can now effectively interact with computers, which was something that we couldn't really do in the past without a ton of computing power. And now we have that computing power available to us because of companies like Microsoft that have, that have taken the whack when it comes to the investment and they've democratized it. As Vikas was saying, with cloud computing, we saw the same thing. And now each of us gets to enjoy this powerful, powerful computing resource without making the investment. And of course, you know, these big vendors are, are, are recouping their costs in their way, but they basically spreading it across all the various users around the world, which makes it very, very easy for people like us to access phenomenal technology. So on that note, um, I did see a, a hand that was raised. I, I wasn't able to catch the name. But if you wouldn't mind dropping your your comment in the chat box and then I can uh, pick it up. And I've also noticed that in the chat box, we've put in the URL for the Access AI Resource Hub. That's where um, that's the resource hub I mentioned earlier. It's, it's a set of free resources. It's just there for your use. Go ahead and click the link and access as much as you want. Um, that's really there purely for, for the benefit of small businesses. OK. So let's move on. Let's move to Ayman here with the next question. Uh, let's get into some more realistic examples. Now, I will let the audience know that we are going to be showing you a lot of details. So we're going to do a screen share very soon uh, where we can actually show you how this is done because we want to keep the theme practical. We want to we we make this such that small businesses can walk away and implement from day one. But we're going to get to that in just a little bit. For now, I want Ayman to share with us verbally, just to set the scene and the context. Can you share some examples of how Microsoft Copilot assists with things like document creation, maybe um, for those of us who want to write code, how, how can we do that? Or, or some of the other more basic practical uses of Copilot for a small business. Can you share some examples? No, no, perfect. Uh, so I think with Copilot, especially with M365 Copilot, uh, you can use it across the business. So in your HR department, in your marketing departments, in your sales department, even in your IT and finance department. So for example, in uh, HR department, you can help it basically communicate policies and draft job description much faster. So the idea with you know uh, Word with Copilot, you can actually in the HR specific items, where if you have a lot of documents that you need to create, it can help you basically create the job descriptions, all the policies that it needs to happen uh, based on some references that you can do there. So it, it saves you a lot of time in terms of kind of creating all of these documents from scratch. Um, also in terms of training material, if you want to create some stunning training material for your staff, you can actually use it there as well. 
Uh, and more importantly, it's basically is easily respond to job applicants in a much more kind of automated way using Outlook with the uh, co-pilot co draft there as well. So it basically makes it easier for you to communicate with your job applicants. There. So that's on the HR side. On the marketing side, it basically, as we can see in the demos, basically how can we unlock basically some of the creativity where you can have more than one idea and how do we collaborate on them? Uh, also in terms of creating the first draft of the project, where if you want to create you know, through Word and Copilot, it can help you basically get the ball rolling at least to create what you what you need there as well. And more importantly, is basically summarize some of the marketing campaigns, where if you have a lot of results, you want to summarize what's going on there. You can actually use it with Excel and you can actually create the right visuals that you need to communicate to your management there. And finally, from an I, I'm sorry, before that, like even from an I, you know, from a sales perspective, you can help it, you know, help it basically summarize some of the conversations that you had, uh, especially with teams, uh, especially also as a sales manager, you can actually take a look at what's happening with your sales uh, representatives and what are the items there. You can summarize the calls and you can see what are where did it, you know uh, you can provide better feedback to your uh, sales rep there as well. Uh, also, from an IT perspective, with GitHub Copilot, you can actually help it basically create the code for you, uh, where you can actually tell it in a uh, more of a natural language way, where you can actually say, "Can you please create a code that does X?" and it will help you automate generate basically the code there. And finally, on the uh, financial perspective, and this is where the real power of Excel and Copilot, where it will help automate a lot of things where instead of you kind of doing a lot of the manual work and having an, you know, um, you know, you need some assistant or something like that to help you with that, it empowers you to do all of these things with Copilot, where you can actually tell it in a natural language format way to create uh, things for you there. And I will we'll show some demos in terms of how, how would that work in a, a more practical sense. Perfect. Um, I mean, you said a lot in a very short time and yeah. I'm grateful that you uh, managed to say so much so quickly. I want to just just spend a second just so that our audience feels that they're getting all of this. Um, folks, I just want to go ahead and say this, you know, I didn't want to necessarily be punting a product right now, but I have to say that this stuff is magic. I mean, as as someone who represents the small business community, I'm very much a part of the small business community. I know that our number one challenge is resources. We need effective resources, resources that we can trust to get the job done. That is the pain point of small business. We've got to get all this work done and we're somehow trying to get it done with the fewest number of people possible because there's all sorts of complexities and growing pains and you know costs that are associated with having big teams, right? So folks, taking this resource issue into account, when I hear things like, we can get a job description done very quickly. And I can attest to this because now we are living with this reality, okay? If you have to ask me to go back two years and do things as I did, I would feel you are taking me back into the dark ages because now I can get a job description in seconds. That would be in a, you know, in a, in a, in a typical world without AI or without the access to AI, I would have to spend months doing this kind of collaboration, or I would spend days at the very least doing this kind of document creation. Then there's sales proposals, which just can come out the woodwork very quickly. The sales team can pump out twice as much in half the time. And uh, summaries, I mean, um, I'm gonna mention that very quickly. To summarize the discussion, I mean, think about it. Sometimes we have people on the phone who represent our companies. You know, we are busy small business leaders. We're trying to get everything done in one go. So sometimes you, you have to like uh, leave a job to someone else and you might not be aware of what's actually going on. Now you can actually distill the summary of the call in the quickest way. Or it's, it, it might be a meeting that you did attend and you just want to have the meeting notes, but you don't have the time to make the meeting notes. So you can just record the meeting and easily get the transcription and get that distilled down to the top two to three key points that you need to worry about. And then, you know, Ayman mentioned uh, the Excel, um, you know, the Excel point where this is not limited to just the Word, Microsoft Word conversation. It's not just about your word processor. It can also enter the realm of budgets and spreadsheets. I think it's critical for us to realize that right now we have access to a tool that can physically do a budget for us. And here's the beautiful thing. We are actually interacting with that tool using natural language, meaning you are speaking English to Excel and Excel is doing the work in its normal, typical way but it's doing the work for you. That's like having a dedicated assistant. As someone who is actually using um, a whole host of tools right now, I can tell you that this stuff is so amazing and magical. 
that you will never go back to doing it any other way. It's like going back to the dark ages. So before I get too caught up uh, in this in this whole thing, I mean, I mean, I was going to get into a bit of the features, but I'm, I'm thinking what we can do is let's have you go into the demo right now, because I think everyone's super excited to see the demo. Um, let's see this actual tool in action. And as we're talking through it, maybe you can drop some of the features in as you go through. Um, we'll leave that to you, but let's see how we go on with the demo for now. Perfect. Awesome. Then. So now for now, I want you to imagine basically you're in a Teams meeting, right? So you're collaborating with a few of your colleagues. And basically the idea is a lot, you know, you have a marketing brainstorming session, right? So you have whiteboard um, kind of enabled in, in uh, Microsoft Teams. And you want to be able to co collaborate with your teammates. You want to come up with ideas. Uh, and I think here the idea is, is basically we usually when you have a brainstorming session, you have a lot of competing ideas. Everyone comes up with ideas. There's no structure. It's like you don't know where to begin, how to structure everything, so on and so forth. And sometimes you don't even have the ideas to begin with. Like you, like where do we start? Where the power of Copilot is. So basically here, I can just ask Copilot, hey Copilot, can you please suggest some ideas for me? And that's the cool part. Like it will actually help me get the ball rolling there. So it's not going to replace my creativity. It will empower my creativity. So here I can just say, you know what? I want. Uh, can you please, uh, you know, help me find inexpensive ways to optimize my website for organic reach without like social media, right? So here the cool part is it will actually suggest some ideas for me. Uh, so this is the cool part. It's just basically I'm depending on it just to uh, help accelerate the process. So. Uh, you know, it's still my ideas. It's still basically I'm the one in control. I'm just basically helping it to get the ball rolling there. And especially with I have more than one team member here as well. So what we're trying to do here is basically how do we take ideas into basically you know documents and basically action. And this is basically what the the key point here is. So after basically we come up with this a lot of ideas here. Let's say you know what I want more ideas. You know I I like basically you know let's focus on search engine optimization, upgrade website design so on and so forth. But I need more ideas. I need more kind of uh, meatful ideas. So I can just simply say, can you please generate some more, right? And that's the power of Copilot. It will actually generate some more ideas for me to basically to actually, um, you know, go about it, right? So it actually gave me more ideas like, you know, testing search engine optimization tactics, prioritize keywords, so on and so forth. So I like this list. I have a list of 10 kind of ideas. Let's just insert those. Now the cool part is it will actually put them in the board uh, with for my teammates to actually look at and to basically kind of drill down into, right? So we talk about it. We have this discussion with our teammates. So from from blank canvas, we have some some content to work with, right? So basically now we can build on top of the ideas. So right now, basically, let's say you know what, prioritizing keywords is a really kind of important part in terms of kind of having more um, reach there. So let's try to kind of create more ideas from there, and just basically build, you know, uh, drill down into it even further. So here I can say, please go ahead and suggest some ideas for me. So I can say, you know, it will actually suggest some more ideas based on prioritized keywords. And that's the cool part. It's basically um, using the power of, uh, you know, natural language, uh, natural language to kind of combine it with basically what are some of the information that we have there as well. Uh, so here basically I'll give you some ideas more on the prioritized keywords. So probably, in, you know, part of it is optimizing the on-page content, use keyword variations, uh, consider search volume and competition. So it it can actually drill down into some of those ideas here with me as well. So I can say, okay, you know what? Let's insert those ideas. And it basically created, you know, from prioritized keywords, it created more ideas there for me. So it basically kind of helped me drill down into that one more while also collaborating with my teammates as well. But that's the power of this is basically it helped me from a very black canvas. We don't know where to start to basically having some solid ideas where we can start there. Now, let's say basically, you know what? We have all those ideas. We want to create something actionable, like a document, a proposal, uh, and basically more importantly, like, you know, a presentation that we can do to uh, take to our management, right? So this is basically the power of Teams with Copilot. Now, what we're looking at is the power of uh, Copilot with the M365 apps, Word, Excel, and uh, PowerPoint. So here, basically, you know, I need to write the project proposal. Uh, I, have, I have no idea where to start from. So here, basically, Copilot is here to help. Uh, so I can just say, basically, please create a project proposal, and you know, with a slash, I can say, please, you know, uh, create create from a reference file. So right now, instead of starting from scratch, I want to refer to a specific file. Uh, the file could be multiple things, right? So it could be a PowerPoint presentation that we have. 
do you want to create into a, a you know, PowerPoint presentation? Or more importantly, it could be the Teams meeting that you already had, where you summarize it using Copilot. And from that bi-weekly Teams meeting on OneNote or a loop, to create from it the Word document there. So it's basically to create some actionable item from it there as well. Or you can simply basically refer to a specific, to another kind of planning document that you had to create this document from. So I've created from like, like the planning document that we have, and I say, go ahead and generate. So the ideas there were just more of a planning document where the ideas were kind of raw. Here is basically creating it in a project proposal manner. So it will actually structure the document the way a project proposal should be. Uh, so it, it helps you basically accelerate things. Instead of you trying to figure out what's usually in a project proposal document, uh, trying to refer to other templates, that's where we're there. Or, but, you know, and usually even if you want to save as something different, usually the macros and the formatting all kind of goes out of whack. Here it creates it in a much more consistent way. So here basically, I, you know, the cool part with uh, Copilot is you are in full control. So basically AI is not controlling you, you are controlling AI. So here you have the full control of whether you want to keep this, regenerate, uh, and you have the full transparency of what actually happened there. So here I'll say, you know what, let's go ahead and keep this, um, you know, keep this document there as well, right? Now, basically, I can scroll up a little bit, uh, you know, just to go up a little bit over there. And you know what, I want to paste, you know, I have something that, I have a blob, something describing something, I want to paste it in, in this kind of, uh, you know, under the project scope. So I'll go ahead and paste it. So now basically I have, you know, the project information modeling, right? Where I'm describing some of the techniques uh, that we're, we're doing there as well, like 1 million foot square. And here are some of the potential benefits, right? So I'm writing, these are the, some of the techniques and I want to finish off like this is, this is this, uh, the benefits of these technologies. Now, instead of me trying to figure out how to write them down, here this is where I can get uh, Copilot to help me out, right? So instead of, it will read basically the last part and it will actually generate that content for me. So it will understand basically, it will parse the document. It will understand basically, I'm trying to give the benefits of, you know, the building information modeling uh, and laser scanning, so on and so forth. And it will actually suggest content for me. So here basically I can use Copilot within the document. I can say, please go ahead and draft something for me there, right? Uh, I can say basically inspire, like it will actually read the previous part and it will actually continue on with a specific kind of document there. So I can go ahead and say, inspire me. And more importantly, you can also tell it like more, like write something in a, you know, uh, in a respectful tone, so on and so forth. So here what it did, it actually summarized the benefit of each of the items, like the benefits of laser scanning, the benefits of a robotic total station survey. So it basically generated all this content for me without me having to type it down. Now, uh, the cool part here, you still, you, you are still the owner, you need to check the content, you need to check what's going on there. However, what, what, what happened here is basically it helped you basically accelerate things. Instead of you kind of trying to kind of type all of this down, it helped you basically generate all of this content there. So with that, I say, go ahead, keep this information there. And I have like a full document there. So now we've created the project proposal. Imagine now I want to demo, you know, I want to present this to the main kind of leadership stakeholders. So I want to present it to specific, um, uh, you know, management, uh, other key stakeholders that I want to present it to. So now this is the cool part where in, in uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, I can use Copilot there as well. Uh, so with Copilot here, you know, I can say go ahead and get started. I mean, before, b before you yes. carry on. I'm just going yes. to interrupt the flow very quickly. I just want us yes. to give everyone the chance to uh, folks, That's Simon awesome. is, is sending a, is sharing a lot of information in short time. I know that this is quite a lot to digest. I, I think it's phenomenal what he's sharing with us so far. Just the power that we have at our fingertips, the ability to create documents so easily, so professionally, well laid out, well um, structured sentences, like almost perfect grammar. So um, I think this is very, very powerful for uh, you know professional documentation and and for, for to, to be able to get our businesses to look you know very, very professional in short order. I mean, some of the immediate benefits that I can think of is it really doesn't even matter anymore what the levels of staff are that we are recruiting, right? Because recruitment costs are very big, and it doesn't really matter because um, at the end of the day, all of our documentation is going to really look professional. We're not going to have one with broken English and another one that looks really good. It's going to be consistent. It's going to be standard and it's going to really solve for one of the biggest issues we've had 
as small businesses where resources and getting the right level of resource for a small business is not always easy. So I think this is phenomenal. At this point, I would like to ask you if you have any questions whatsoever, please drop it into the chat. Um, if you want to make a comment, uh, drop it in the chat as well. That's fine. We like the interaction. We like the two-way flow. Um, I'm also going to ask on our side if we could quickly la launch the poll. The purpose of the poll, uh, guys, is for you to share your intention to get to know things better. If you're liking what you're seeing and if you're feeling like this is something that you could use to become more effective in your business, or if you just want to investigate how can I use this to, to, to become more effective in my particular business, go ahead and click yes to this poll question. And what we will do is we will have someone contact you so we can set up a session where you can get to know how this tool is going to apply to your business in a more tailored way. So you're going to get a, a more structured uh, interaction where it's going to be about you and your business. OK, so if that's at all interesting to you, go ahead and click yes to that poll question and we will do the work. We will follow up with you afterwards. For now, I hand you back to Ayman, who's going to take us through the next leg of his demo. Perfect. Awesome. Then. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so the idea here basically where, you know, where we were is basically, you know, we wrote some documents. We want to now present them to some, uh, some manner, you know, to other key stakeholders that we have there. So we want to summarize some of those things there. Now, this is the power of Copilot. It's you don't have to worry about the templates or the how to create it and how to structure the document. You can have basically Copilot take first pass at it, right? So simply just from you know from the prompt, you can say transform a file, right? Uh, so when you click here, you can say transform a file, and when you put a forward slash, this is where you can do other references. There. So here you can do it from another presentation, from you know another slide, or from an added image. So you have multiple options there. Here, what we're going to do, we're going to you know, transform from a file. So here we're going to select the word document that basically that was the project proposal that we had there. So from it, I can say basically go ahead and create this, you know, create this into a PowerPoint slide. Now the, the cool part, what it'll do, it'll actually parse all this information and basically create the PowerPoint slide based and even create the theme based on basically what's going on there. So it's kind of like the, you know, the design sorry, I'm creator. A, yeah, I'm a one quick thing. I'm terribly sorry yes. to break your flow. You mentioned the word pass. If you could please just explain what that word pass means so that everyone ah. fully gets it. No, no, it makes sense, makes sense. So the idea with first pass is more of you are in control. So the idea is basically uh, Copilot is actually doing the things that you can do manually. It's not going to do anything, you know, behind the scenes or anything like that. It will do everything transparently in front of you. Uh, so as first pass, the idea is basically instead of you trying to kind of figure out the theme, you know, try to kind of kickstart the process by getting Copilot to create the whole doc, you know, the whole kind of PowerPoint for you. And then you can go step into it and basically modify some of the few things that you feel it didn't get right or understood it wrong. So you can actually basically you have full control of that. So the idea here is basically get Copilot to try to at least try to kind of create all of this uh, flow for you. And then basically most of the time it should be it should be like you know um, aligned 100% with what you kind of imagined. Uh, the idea is basically you can also modify and add a few things as well. So the idea here, you are still in full control and it's actually using the designer to kind of create all of this for you here as well. So here at the cool part, it's with Copilot, it will tell you every step of the way what it's actually been doing. Uh, so you have full control of what's going on there. So now we've created this powerful uh, PowerPoint that we can actually now present to, the, uh, to, to, to our key stakeholders there. Now, let's say I want to go through the numbers, right? So I want to see how successful the project was. You know, we we went from brainstorming to create other proposal documents. We presented it to the right people. Now we executed the project. Now we want to see what's going on there. So we want to analyze some of the data there. So this is the power of Copilot with Excel, where now um, I can get basically Copilot to do a lot of the things that I used to do manually, right? So let's say, for example, I have a lot of decimals. I want to remove them. So what used to happen is you had to select those two columns and then you had to press those two buttons here where you kind of remove some of those, uh, you know, some of those kind of decimals there as well. Instead of doing that and saying, you know, trying to kind of go with tutorial online, figuring out how to do it, so on and so forth, you can get Copilot to do it for you. So you can just say basically don't show the decimal points for the sales amount. Now here it will automatically kind of parse what's going on there in the uh, column uh, 
sections where it will understand grosses, nets, it will understand basically what we're talking about there. So here basically, you know, with the power of Copilot, I can just simply tell it what to do. It will actually do it for me. So instead of me trying to figure out how to do it. So here you can see basically we've removed the decimals from both kind of uh, gross sales kind of, uh, uh, you know, the columns there as well. And the, the best part, it'll actually tell you exactly what it did. And you have the power to undo some of those items there. As well. So what's happening here is basically you are in control and Copilot is just assisting you to get there faster. That's kind of the idea there. Now, let's say basically I want to now uh, do more with the data that I have, right? So I want to basically highlight any of the say any of the gross sales that are actually over 500k, right? So what used to happen before is you kind of do either a conditional formatting where you actually have them to create a rule where if something happened above this certain amount, it will highlight it for you, or basically you need to you know so you need to do a lot of manual steps for that. Here, basically, with Copilot, I can just tell you know I can just simply with a natural language, kind of like I'm talking to my, uh, you know, to to my colleague. Can you please basically uh, highlight highlight in yellow any kind of sales above 500k? So with that, basically, I automatically basically you know got Copilot to highlight some of those items for me automatically. So I didn't have to do anything, and as well as it actually told you what it did. So that's the beauty of it. It basically tells you exactly from where to where and what the action it, it actually happened. And you have the full control to uh, undo it as well. Now let's say I want to do some charts, right? So what used to happen is basically you have to select certain items, create the pivot table, and then create some, you know, go to insert charts, and then you try to basically see what you can do there. Here basically you can say, just show me some insights on my data. So here it will actually show you some recommended insights on the data uh, instantly based on parsing the information that it has here, and it will actually show you basically some of the kind of insights that you might need there. Uh, so let's say basically you want even all the insights. Now the cool part with Copilot, it will actually give you some suggestions of what are some of the things that you can do there. So here basically it has a prompt. You can type it or you can just select the one here where add all insights into a one sheet. So with that, I can just say basically add all of the insights that I have on this on the, on the numbers that I have there. So with the one power, instead of me trying to create four different sheets and uh, basically each one on its own and trying to kind of uh, organize them and put them in different sheets, so on and so forth, or at least even trying to select the series and trying to select the data, so on and so forth. Here with the power of Copilot, it saved me a whole bunch of time and doing all of these manually. Where basically with one command, I was able to actually create all of this uh, within, you know, one, you know, three seconds where I just type it, please add all the insights. It added all the insights for me there as well. So uh, that's basically the power of Copilot. Uh, I think I'll just, you know, this is kind of some of the, you know, just a tip of the iceberg that we have from, um, you know, with with Copilot and what we can do there. So I'll give it back uh, to the team and just to basically see if there's any questions or any uh, any discussion there as well. That, that's awesome, uh, Ayman. I think absolutely phenomenal. Folks, if you are not um, going nuts right the second about what this thing can do for your business, then chances are you need to spend a little bit more time with the technology and with some experts to get to know how this can apply to your business. Um, as you know, we launched a, um, a poll just a short while ago. We can launch, uh, we can launch it again if needed. Um, here's the thing, folks. You, you, you're going to want to. You're going to want this technology in your business. You're going to want to at least evaluate how it can impact your business, and more than impact your business, how it can transform the way you are doing your work today. You have to take a look at this thing. You have to give this time because this is critical to your to your business and your success. I'm going to go ahead and suggest that you, uh, like right now, you go ahead and you click a yes in that poll question that has popped up on your screen. Are you ready to harness the transformative power of Copilot? In fact, I'm going to go ahead and say it's not about whether you're ready or not. Just click click yes if you'd like to investigate how Copilot can impact your business. If you need that one-to-one -one time, if you have some questions about how this is going to transform, transform your business, please go ahead and click yes to this. Um, there are some questions that have come through, so I'm going to go ahead and just take um, some of these questions. 
Uh, Quibus, your your question is going to be answered very soon because I was coming to uh, coming to the security point in just a second. Um, let's let's go back to a question that we received from Darby. Um, so, um, Eamon, Darby is asking, is there a method right now or a tool or a system or a report where we can gauge whether a customer, and in fact, he's also asking about partners, but let's just um, accent on customers for now, uh, where the customers are ready for Copilot. Is there such a report that Microsoft is, is, is evaluating internally or making available? Is that something that's there? Uh, definitely. So I think as part of the, we do have the, the SMB uh, optimization assessment. Um, I can share it on the screen, but I think the idea behind it is there are the AI transformation index that uh, if you're working with a specific, as a customer, if you're working with a specific partner, you can have that exercise together where you can analyze basically most of the information in most of the practices that you have in your business, where it can measure what are the things that you have that, you know, uh, to, to measure how ready are you for, uh, for, for AI and basically to, um, uh, you know, master this uh, part there. So the major part in, in terms of the assessment is part of it is, you know, because AI, it's, it's using a lot of the data that you have in the cloud is basically, do you have the right security measures? Do you have the right classifications? Do you have the right kind of authorization level that you have there? Because there it will become much more uh, important, basically, because since Copilot will be will be able to kind of, we'll look at the technical architecture where it will collect information across the board from all of the Microsoft 365 data, from Excel, from Word, from PowerPoint. So it can actually combine all of this data to provide you with specific information there. But the idea here basically is, the classification of it so that when when a specific user is interacting with Copilot, do they have the right authorization or do they have the right kind of a level of access there? But that's why um, preparing this for Copilot, it's not just simply where, you know, let's just enable it. It's more of looking at whether you have the right data classification within the organization there. So we have the right tools and the right reports that as a partner or as an IT department that you want to work on, you can do that assessment. And you can see what are the measures that you need to implement before you kind of go with the, you know, to, to fully scale with Copilot. Okay, good. So that's excellent. Um, thank you for that, uh, guys. And also, Davi has gone ahead and suggested something called a Block 64. I'm personally going to go check that out right after this. So thank you for the suggestion. Thank you for the dialogue team. Um, uh, let me just go through some of these questions that are coming through. I love the interaction. I love the engagement, folks. This is awesome. Please keep it coming. And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this over and over. You've got to go ahead and say yes to that poll question because there's no way we can ignore the, the fact that this technology is going to positively impact the way you are making money right now. There's no question. Okay, it's going to really remarkably um, um, double or 10x possibly your, your team capacity right now. Okay, so we're going to keep going and I'm going to leave you to complete the poll. And remember, when you complete the poll, please include your name. Uh, otherwise, it shows up as anonymous. Okay, good. Um, let's go to, I think the name is um, um, Janika. Uh, can Copilot consolidate data across various sheets? Uh, so I think we, we're referring to spreadsheets there inside Excel. Ayman, do you want to just give us your answer there quickly? Yes. <laughs> Very easy. Okay. Like that's the, if it has the right authorization, you know, like a right authentication level for that specific user, it can definitely do that. And it can actually go a step further, not just simply within Excel, but it actually, if you like, let's say through Teams Copilot, for example, right? And you want to combine what are some of the documents and some of the other things that I have, it can actually, because we're using the Microsoft Graph, where it integrates all of those items there. Given that you have the right classification, you know, right security uh, classification and the right kind of security authorization, you'll be able to combine data across the board from my, the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So it's not just simply from Excel sheets together, but it's basically everything together at the same time. Perfect. Um, so I think this is exciting, not just for Janika, this is exciting for all of us. Guys, you know what it's been like to date. You know what it's been like trying to work across right. multiple sheets, gather data together, cross-reference. Man, I mean, I'm getting excited about this. Like, I actually want to, you know, as soon as we're done with the webinar, I'm going to go and start playing around a little bit more because I'm already thinking of ways in which I could benefit just from that cross-referencing point. Okay, so um, Jared is asking a very interesting question here. Will the use of Copilot for data analytics uh, make Power BI obsolete? 
Not really. It's more of um, so the idea is basically Power BI or like now Microsoft Fabric. Uh, it's basically the visualization tool, right? So you can visualize the data inside Excel, plus basically you can visualize it within also uh, uh, Power BI. So now Copilot is also within Power BI or Microsoft Fabric. So you can actually within Power BI itself, the tool, you can actually use Copilot there to kind of summarize some of the data there for you. So uh, you can think of Power BI or Fabric as just more of an endpoint to visualize all of the data, not just from Microsoft 365, but across the board. If you have some databases coming on or you have co connected it with other data lakes, you can combine it all in one location. Uh, so definitely Copilot is available there as well. And you can actually communicate with it the same way that you're actually what we just did right now, where basically, you know, in natural language, like how many users, you know, uh, how many users are in like uh, this location, for example, and from this time to that time. So it can actually give you this visualization much more, uh, much more real time. But, but it's actually more of an addition to, you know, with Power BI, it's more of a kind of the pro tool for data visualization. But that's kind of the idea there. Right. Uh, that's great. And uh, thank you for that. Um, Natanya is asking, I hope I get the, I got the name correct Stay with me if I have not. Um, you are asking for an email address for someone who is not able to answer the poll. They're having some trouble getting on. Folks, if you know of people who will be excited about this and who need this technology or who really need the help of uh, some kind of technology to exponentially grow their resource base and allow them to do a lot more with fewer resources, then please do let us know by email. We will still honor the request. We will still go ahead and set up a meeting with them so that they can get information about this one-to-one -one and we can show them the technology. We can educate them on the technology and get them to see how this technology is going to add value to their business. All right. And you can do so by sending an email. We dropped the email address into the chat section. It is info at AI for small business.co.za. That is the email address for the resource hub that Access has sponsored. So that's info at AI for small business.co.za. Go ahead and share that email if you would like to request um, a one to one meeting regarding this technology and how you can access this technology for your business. You can, um, Natanya, you can go ahead and share that with your colleague, and I invite the rest of you guys to do the same thing. All right, we're going to progress here. We're going to move uh, move on a little bit. Um, Rob, I'm going to quickly answer your question. You're asking about Copilot and will it help a small one-man e-commerce business or will it be underutilized? Rob, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. I'm not going to pass this message onto the panelists. If you are a small one-person organization, you are not. There's no fear of underutilizing this. There's only the fear of overutilizing it because you're going to need it way more than anyone else. All right, or whoever's running that. Um, that, that one one person organization. All right, folks, so we're going to keep going here. Uh, there was a question on security, so I'm going to pivot back to us as, um, as a team here. I mean, I'm going to go back to you for this one. Um, Vikas, you can pick up the conversation if, if you'd like to join in on this particular question. Please talk to us about the security and compliance considerations. We are talking about things like all of our data being exam examinable and, and the, there's, there's going to be this artificial intelligence that has access to all of this data, it's company data. Should we be nervous? Uh, talk to us about security. All right. Um, can I present something? Just to Go make ahead. it easier for folks to, 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 to see what, sure. what we're uh, talking about. So uh, the idea basically this is this is basically when you're prepping for uh, AI. So, um, in, in a short answer, no. Like this is basically you shouldn't be fearing that. With it. So, preparing for AI. Basically, what you need is, you know, part of it the goals, the capabilities, so on and so forth. So, how to prep for AI? Um, basically, it's this is kind of from Gartner, where security and risk management leaders must implement verifiable AI data and control private, you know, uh, uh, you know, AI data protection, privacy, application security, and filtering. Uh, large language models there. So the, the way that our co-pilot stack works is basically you have the AI security layer. Uh, let me just put the laser part here real quick. So you have basically the, the co-pilot side, you have the Microsoft co-pilot, which basically comes with our apps. Plus basically you can create your own co-pilot. So here basically the idea is with the Microsoft 365 apps, um, you know, it's built on the graph. So here you can do graph connectors where now you can control everything from the same co-pilot. Right? So let's say other than the data that you have in Excel and Word, you have some database somewhere else. 
So you can actually write a plugin where it actually integrates with Copilot to basically also consolidate all of this uh, information together. So for example, let's say you have some service desk uh, information or you have some kind of uh, tools, CRM tool that you have for your customers. So you can integrate that as well all in one location there. So then basically you have the AI orchestration level and it works with your data. And this is the part where I need to kind of emphasize more and more. Your data is your data. This is basically with the part with the cloud. So it's not basically we're not doing chat GPT. We're not doing the it's basically Microsoft created the you know, we're using the large language model. We're creating a specific instance to you in the Microsoft 365 tenant, right? So we're creating a specific instance specifically for you as a customer. So your data is your data. No one else is actually using it. Also, uh, we're not using this data to train basically the open AI model uh, that we have uh, uh, without you know, any permission. Plus your data is protected, you know, using our kind of, you know, we already as part of the M365 kind of data protection uh, and the security models that we have there, it's already protected as part of the more, you know, the co uh, comprehensive tools that we have, like using Microsoft Entra, so on and so forth. So, and furthermore, it's actually built on top of the AI principles that we have. It's like based on fairness, reliability, privacy, inclusiveness, uh, transparency, and accountability. But that's kind of the idea there. So in a nutshell, what Copilot is, it's basically natural language model built on top of the, like, you know, you have it integrates with the large language model that we had, that we create a specific instance for you, plus basically with the Microsoft Graph. Now the Microsoft Graph, what it is, it's when you create a Microsoft 365 instance, it basically everything that controls uh, the uh, your Microsoft 365 apps and your data. But basically you can do everything through the apps or through APIs. Plus, basically, the apps, that's the one that's controlled with it and the web. So this is basically how it's structured. But from a security perspective, uh, again, your data is your data. It is well protected. It is basically, you know, we're creating specific instances from an AI that only interacts with your data and it's not basically communicating somewhere else. But that's basically just kind of uh, elaborating more on that question there. Thank you for that, Ayman. I think it definitely um, eases away some of that concern. I love the fact that you've distinguished between the Microsoft way of doing this versus the public accessible tools such as ChatGPT, which are uh, open access tools, and it's there to make things convenient for people, but it is definitely not enterprise grade. It is not definitely not business grade. So if you currently are putting a ton of your business information, especially if you're in fields like uh, the sensitive fields like legal, like if you're running a legal practice or if you're possibly a medical practitioner or if you're handling, uh, if you're an insurance broker, I mean, these are areas where you have to be very sensitive about the data you are processing and you have to do it in line with legal requirements. So you cannot be taking chances. It might be convenient to use things like chat GPT and, and heaven knows I encourage it, but please don't do so at the risk of your license at the risk of your of you losing some some part of your business we have to be responsible about the manner in which we use ai we're talking about this a lot right now but i encourage you folks let's inquire if at all uh, if this is something that resonates with you if this topic of security and being and respecting the privacy of your clients if that resonates with you definitely request uh, uh, an in-depth consultation with us uh, we'll go ahead and let's set that up please go ahead and click yes to your poll question if you haven't already you can in fact go into the chat uh, the meeting chat just click the chat icon scroll to the top because the the poll is sitting at the top and just click um click the poll and submit your answer click yes and we will go ahead and arrange for someone to contact you in order to get your questions answered and for you to see how this is going to make sense for your business okay so we've covered the security question we still have some more questions coming through Folks, I love the participation. Please keep it coming. We have a little bit of time left, but we're going to try our best to answer all of your questions. Um, the next question I have here from Yvette um, is, will this be available to educational institutions using the educational version? Vikas, I'm not sure whether you are familiar from a licensing point of view, whether this is available on the edu uh, education SKU. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, if they just reach out to us, we can do that. Uh that investigation for them and get back to them. OK, fantastic. So Yvette, if you wouldn't mind clicking yes to your poll question, we will go ahead and we will do a follow up consultation with you where someone will be addressing your particular query directly with you. All right. So uh, for, for those for those of you who have similar questions, remember there is still the opportunity for you to have 
an in-person consultation. Well, not an in-person, but it could be virtual, but it's going to be one-to-one. -one. Um, okay, good. So uh, Darby is asking a very complicated question. Can you, uh, can you please not use acronyms in your question, Darby, because I, I don't even understand them, and I've been in this game for a long time. Um, we have a question from Shahid. Uh, what governance is there for Copilot to ensure Poppy and GDPR adherence? How safe is my data? Now, now I know we covered the security element. I think Shahid is coming uh, from the perspective of data privacy. And this goes a little bit back to the question I, or the points I made about healthcare. So do you want to just double click? I'm in a bit on the, on the GDPR slash data privacy aspect. Hi, it's a, it's a, it's a long topic, and I, th I think we can um, dig deeper into it. In a nutshell, basically, we are complying with all of them. And basically, we, we do have like the methodology of uh, how to secure, you know, it is top of mind in terms of like how to actually uh, adhere with, uh, you know, with, the, with JDPR. So the idea is basically we do have the data residency part as part of the M365, where it's basically we have the regional part. So, um, I think I can send some documents in terms of you know digging deeper into that subject because I don't think it's something we can answer in like in okay. a few minutes. It's something it's much more deeper discussion to kind of go over kind of what exactly the you know the the specific controls and items that we have to adhere to those items. But in a nutshell, yes, your data is very secure and it is adhering with JDPR and especially with the other EU kind of mandates as well. Okay, perfect. So there's a high level um, commitment to adherence, but guys, just bear in mind the data privacy is about strategy and process. It's more than just how one technology is using or, or um, you know, uh, processing data. So what I'm going to suggest there is that for those of you who are interested in that in that particular topic, let's do a follow up with you. Go ahead and click yes to your poll question. I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but it just gives you the opportunity of looking at your specific data privacy workflow. If you're in healthcare, it's going to be different to someone who is in insurance, who's going to be different to someone who's in retail. All right. So let's do a one to one um, consultation with you and understand your requirements and advise you accordingly. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, park that for a you know further discussion on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, I was called out for missing Johan's question. Apologies for that, not intentional. There's quite a lot coming through. Can Copilot be used in Visual Studio or Microsoft SQL? Uh, Ayman, uh, just quickly your response there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different Copilot. So that's, that's the idea. So it's basically the Copilot and Visual Studio. It's more of the GitHub kind of Copilot where you have it there. Um, Visual Studio, the way you want to use it is basically it's just the data. Um, you have it basically integrated with, you know, Power BI, where you can actually integrate with it there to kind of look through the data and using Copilot there as well. For uh, basically, in short, yes, uh, it's just not within the context of the M365 Copilot. It's more of a different Copilot that's available in other ones there. Okay, good. So. Um... So I think I think uh, Davi, uh, now that you've unpacked that uh, acronym, we have in fact addressed the data protection thing lightly. Um, as um, Ayman mentioned, we will do follow-ups uh, one to one with individuals as we understand their data protection needs. Um, uh, so yeah, I think there's some excellent comments coming through on the GDPR and data privacy point. I think this is really good. I think there's a link here as well by Andy. I'm not going to chance get a, get a chance to click your link right now. But if this is helping with understanding the, the education skew for Copilot, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Um, good. So, folks, I think we're making good headway here. We have five minutes to go. I do want to tackle the pricing point before we wrap up. I think, again, as, as small businesses, we, we, you know, the, 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 cost, the cost factor is a real factor. We want to understand pricing and how it's going to work for us as South African entities. So let's dive into that a little bit. Again, I can't stress this enough. Folks, if there was ever a technology that you really want to, you know, not neglect and, and, and dive deeper into, take advantage of this opportunity, uh, become part of the, the AI for small business resource hub that's brought to us by Axis. Um, go ahead and click the link that was put into your chat box. We can put that link in again. Uh, just the AI for small business uh, resource hub. There we go. We have the link in again, which is fantastic. Um, to take advantage of this offer, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot stress this enough. For now, let's go to Vikas. Let's talk price. Um, firstly, 
what, what are we looking at for, um, for, for Copilot to have all of this wonderful feature set available to us at any time? What are we looking at price-wise, uh, Vikas? Um, I think it's a difficult question to answer because um, we're selling through, through the channel. Um, so if you're an end customer, most of the time you will buy a managed service from 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 a partner of ours, and they normally price this based on the service that you agree with them and the solution that they need to cover. So it's baked into the per device fee that they give you that includes your office application, and they will now have a service that includes the 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 power of AI in it. Um, so that can range anything from from a thousand rand per device to two thousand rand per device based on the service that you require. Um, I think what we what we really should do is these assessments that we measure. You know, if you if you have a need at an end customer or at a, at, a, at a customer, you know, let's rather do the assessment. Access can help with those assessments, um, and then let's get a real calculation out there with what would your return on investment be, and then what solution you would be. I think one of the biggest tips I want to provide is you don't have to to commit your entire estate. Let's use the power of the cloud and just commit the users that really needs this. You know, based on the the result of the assessment, and get those people on board it and 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 then continue monitoring the adoption from that point on and see and ensure that you get the return that you require. Okay, fantastic. I mean, there has been the number of thirty dollars per user thrown about. Would that apply um, to small businesses as well? Is that something that's available to small businesses? Yes, um, that is true. Uh, again, we will price it in the local currency in the South African market, uh, and 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 then if you if you as you work with your reseller, that price will be baked into all the services that they provide. Um, for me, I think you know it's a it's a it's a very small investment to make, you know, based on the return that we see in the demo and the the cost of of of, of the employee in getting their productivity up. Um, one of the questions I would like to ask is, you know. What you should ask yourself is what if I and, and apply the 80-20 principle. What if I can get my top 20% of performers to improve that performance by 80%? What would that mean for my business? And that's exactly the type of calculation that we will assist um, the partners or the customers to make. Okay, that's fantastic. So, so guys, if you're confused about uh, costs, what the net impact will be on your organization, just go ahead and click yes on your poll and we will go ahead and help you with a one-to-one -one consultation. We'll, you, you'll get a quote from, from the reseller. You'll get, you'll get all the help that you need for your specific business. Um, there are some um, licensing requirements. For example, you'd have to be on a, on a specific type of Microsoft 365. So all of that help will be given to you when you're talking to your reseller. They will be able to um, make sure that you, are, you have the right licensing underneath and that you, that you do the correct add-ons and they'll give you pricing, et cetera. And of course, the value of this investment um, versus the price, that's something that needs to be unpacked on a one-to-one -one basis. We need to have a look at your business. We have need to have a look at what you do. I mean, we, we know for a fact that this is going to dramatically increase your ability to, to, to thrive, to make, a lot of, uh, to make a lot of money. These are very factual things that can be shown to you on a one-to-one -one basis when you do an in-person or a virtual consultation. Um, I, I really hope you take us up, up on this opportunity and you can also use the email address that we put into the chat, into the chat just a little bit earlier on. OK, folks, so that brings us uh, pretty much on time. Just before we completely close off, I, I, I would like just a one liner from Ayman and a one liner from Vikas, just um, in terms of your uh, your advice to people who are on the call and who are looking for the way forward. Just a closing parting shot, Ayman, and the same for you, Vikas. So let's start with Ayman. Yeah, so. Um, basically, Copilot is your assistant. You can help it basically act, you know, empower, it empowers you. So it will help you do more with less. That's kind of the idea there. Uh, so the idea is basically if you want to summarize a meeting, for example, instead of 43 minutes, it will actually do it in 11. Uh, and I think your time saved, your time is money. But this is why Copilot is helping you basically save more money. And it's the assistant that will help you basically accelerate things and let you achieve more. Thank you, Ayman. Vikas? Uh, from my side, if you're a partner on this call and you don't know where to start to build a, a AI practice within your organization, reach out. We will help you do that. And if you're a customer and you're not sure how to utilize the power of AI, you can reach out to us as well, and we will align that with one of our partners and we'll get you going. Thank you so much, Vikas. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. We're at time. Thank you so much for your attendance, for your active participation. It has been fantastic. I can tell you from my side, there's no other technology to get more excited about um, than this one. Um, so go ahead and request a follow-up session with us. Let's see a lot more requests for follow-ups because I, I really feel that this is an opportunity that absolutely must not be missed. This is an opportunity to really strengthen your practice, to really grow your business in the shortest time possible. Elise, I know that you raised your hand. I don't know whether that was an error, but please drop your note in the chat box and we will follow up after, after this call. And for everyone else, thank you so much. And we will um, see you shortly. Um, for any follow-up actions um, uh, with this webinar, we'll be uh, reaching out to you one-to-one. -one. I invite you to continue connecting with us through the AI Small Business Hub brought to us by Axis, and you'll have the link in your chat box. Thank you so much.